So let's get more reaction now to the events here in Downing Street in the last 24 hours. Joining me now is the Shadow Chancellor, Rachel Reeves. A very good morning to you, Rachel Reeves. Thanks so much for good joining morning, us Anna. this morning. Uh, what do you make of the resignation of the Prime Minister? Do you welcome Liz Truss standing down? The longer the Conservatives are in power, the less fit they are for govern, to govern. They can't just pass around uh, being Prime Minister and being Chancellor like it's uh, some sort of game of pass the parcel. They've done huge damage now to our economy, to our global standing in the world. And it's time for a general election to choose a government who can provide the stability and the leadership that the country desperately needs. Well, yes, you want a general election, but it's not going to happen, is it? I mean, that's in the gift of the Prime Minister and anyone who takes over from Liz Truss isn't going to call one. Well, look, I know that there are a lot of decent Conservative MPs who are also incredibly worried about the state of the country, the volatility in financial markets, the damage that that is all doing to uh, the finances of families and pensioners uh, right across the country. Uh, and I would urge them to do the right thing uh, and get the general election that we need because I'm afraid uh, just uh, changing the person at the top, changing the person at number 10 and number 11 is not going to undo all of the damage that the Conservatives have done, not just in the last 45 days, but frankly, in the last 12 years, where we've got economic growth on the floor, interest rates and inflation, uh, extraordinary uh, levels. And this is a crisis clearly made in Downing Street, but it is increasingly working people and some of the most vulnerable in society who are paying the price for that. So what will you do to try to secure a general election? Will you push for a confidence vote in the new prime minister? Well, we're looking at all different uh, opportunities. Uh, but in the end, as, as you suggested earlier, Anna, we would have to work with Conservative MPs to be able to do that because uh, despite everything, they do have a majority in the House of Commons. But I know that there are a lot of Conservative MPs who share the worries of their constituents that uh, another Conservative Prime Minister and Chancellor aren't going to be able to sort out this mess. The government has no mandate uh, from the British people for what they're doing at the moment, uh, no mandate for a new Prime Minister and a new Chancellor. And that is why it is so important to restore the stability that we need in our country, our ability to pay our way in the world, to get a grip of the inflation and the interest rate pressures that are out there at the moment, to secure family finances, that we cannot carry on like this. And the only way to resolve the big challenges that we have is to have a government with a mandate to provide the stability and the leadership that people are crying out for right now and are not going to get under the Conservatives. Well, if you're relying on Tory MPs, it's very unlikely you'll manage to secure that general election. And some might say that two years will give the Labour Party a chance to really familiarise the public with what they, what they stand for, what their policies are. Or are you worried that you'll lose popularity over the next two years before a general election? My biggest concern right now, Anna, is what is happening in the country. Um, people who are coming off fixed rate mortgage deals, 1.8 million of them by the end of next year, are looking to pay an extra £580 a month on average well, yes. in higher mortgage payments uh, alone. So that is why I'm saying that we need a general uh, election. Um, you know, the, as long as it takes, Labour will continue to put the, pay, the case to people. But the sooner that we can have an election, the sooner that the country can get the stability and leadership it needs. Yes. Well, sorry to, to, to interrupt you, but you're right, we are in the middle of a cost of living crisis. And some people will say that's exactly why we don't need the uncertainty of a general election campaign. Well, you know, I would just say that the volatility that we've seen in the financial markets has put increased pressure on government borrowing, but it's also put uh, increased borrowing costs on, on families and businesses uh, and, and, and everybody else. I, I've been in Cardiff for the last um, uh, 24 hours talking particularly to small businesses here about their fears for the future with people uh, not having the money to, uh, to go to the shops, uh, the increased energy costs that businesses are facing. People are worried sick about the future, worried sick about the cost of living, and they fear uh, that uh, just a new combination of Conservative Prime Minister and Chancellor, you know, the third Conservative Prime Minister in a year, we're already on the fourth Conservative Chancellor in just four months. This is unprecedented. And the damage 
every single day that the Conservatives are doing, both to family finances, but also to our global standing in the world. It is incredibly depressing and it is taking a toll on, on people's lives and people's livelihoods. The Conservatives can't just uh, swap around um, who's in charge. Um, they can't treat number 10 and number 11 Downing Street like it's some sort of short stay air at B&B. It's far too important for that. And we need a government with a mandate, a mandate from the British people to make okay. some of the difficult decisions that are needed, but to provide the leadership, the certainty and the stability that our country needs. Well, yes, you talk about difficult decisions. I mean, realistically, Labour would have to spend the next two years raising taxes and cutting spending as well, wouldn't they? Okay. Well, the reason we are talking about these difficult decisions is because of the damage that the Conservatives have done. A month ago, nobody was contemplating the need for spending uh, reductions. That is uh, only on the agenda now because of the spike in borrowing costs brought about by the incredibly irresponsible decisions of the Conservative Party um, over the last few uh, weeks, but also so, so the low growth that the Labour Conservatives would have, to have delivered over the last 12 spending years. Cuts. Sorry, Rachel, well, we've already... you do accept then that Labour would have to go ahead with spending cuts and tax rises? Well, the first thing that I, I would say to that is nobody knows because we do not have an independent forecast from the Office for Budget Responsibility. And we're in the extraordinary situation of going into a Conservative leadership contest, the second this year, and also going into a potential uh, fiscal statement from the latest Chancellor in just over a week's time with nobody knowing the true scale of the damage that has been done to our public finances. That's why in the House of Commons two days ago, Labour uh, called for the government to publish the latest forecasts for the Office for Budget Responsibility. We know that the government have had those forecasts uh, since uh, Liz Truss became uh, Prime Minister uh, 45 or 46 days ago. We deserve to see those so that we can understand the true state of the public finances, because at the moment, Nobody knows the full extent of the damage. And so it's very difficult to put forward fully funded and fully costed plans when we do not know the damage that has been done. Any thoughts on which candidate you'd like to win and be next Prime Minister? I want Keir Starmer to be the next Prime Minister because he's the only person who can provide the stability that the country needs. You know, the Conservatives can carry on with their pass the parcel game, but the country deserves an awful lot better than that. We deserve a general election and the chance for the people to choose who the government is. <laughs> Not what I meant, but I, I guess that was always the way you would answer the question. <laughs> Rachel Rees, thanks very much indeed for your time this morning.